Tom Dorai, John, welcome to Brixton House. Um, we're really elated to have you here, opening Brixton House with your play, Mugabe, My Dad and Me. Can you tell us a little bit about the journey and how and why you wanted to write this story? Yeah, so I, uh, I was born in Zimbabwe, but I grew up in London. Yeah. And I think always, I've always had this question, which I'm sure you've had, uh, where are you from? Now, obviously, I'm from Zimbabwe, so I could answer that question. But it always was followed up by a diatribe from most white people about Mugabe and how he had ruined the country. But it's a bit complicated than that. And this play is not an, a sort of an apology for Mugabe, but it's really about the truth of what happened to Zimbabwe, what happened to us as a people, and what's happening to us now, not just in Zimbabwe, but those of us who live outside of Zimbabwe. It's about four million Zimbabweans live outside of Zimbabwe. So it's a play about that. But in general, I think it's a play about love, and it's a play about family, and how do you heal so that you can move on. And your story features greatly in that telling and that sort of exploration of that history. Mm -hmm. um, why did you feel you wanted to put yourself in the middle of the story and how have you and John been working together to kind of look at what aspect of your personal journey felt important to um, embed in the narrative? Yeah, it felt that, you know, talking about Mugabe without context is very, very difficult. So it felt to me, I really wanted to make, to make a play about Mugabe and the politics of Zimbabwe, but I just was like, well, it's got to be connected to something else, you know. Mm -hmm. How are people going to understand it? And I think you can really understand once you've gone through this play that actually what happened with Zimbabwe, with Mugabe, really had a profound effect on my father. And therefore it had a profound effect on me. And so what's been brilliant about the play is just trying to see where all the strands are connected and how, how do you unpack something that seems to happen politically above you but actually has major, major ramifications, you know, on how you live your life. So, yeah, that's what we've been really trying to put together. Yeah, I think there's a very exciting parallel in terms of, in terms of, there's always this, this um, misconception in the UK um, because of the later um, rhetoric around Mugabe that mm -hmm. it was always this kind of despotic figure, whereas actually, in the beginning, there was a great deal of hope and aspiration connected to him coming into power, and there is a there is a really there is a really useful parallel between his um, his trajectory and the journey of your dad, and and you, what you've been able to do brilliantly is tell that story on both a global, sort of bigger political level with Mugabe and a smaller, much more interpersonal one with you and your family. In, <clears throat> that's great. Um, in terms of um, that process of kind of knowing you've actually done this play before and you're kind of returning back to it, what's, what's that been like? You know, obviously you've got... Um, Millie working with you as well and obviously John and there is obviously an intimate knowledge of the piece but then are there aspects of it that you're returning to and looking at how to sort of um, deliver those moments on stage? Differently I suppose yeah I mean when you're doing a show that you've written that's autobiographical it's amazing how much you need to learn about yourself. Right. Like you think, oh, I've got this, I wrote it, I don't have to learn the lines. <laughs> and then you find out you actually have to learn them a bit harder. Right. Because you remember the actual thing that happened. Your brain remembers that. But you haven't told the whole thing that happened. <laughs> right, right. You've right. only told a selection of what happened. Yeah, yeah. So your brain does this thing of trying to figure out the actual line versus the actual experience. Right. Okay. So being able to come back is actually really powerful because we've been able to sit down and investigate it yeah. and just go, what did we mean by this? What do I mean when I say this? And how do we present that? Right. And actually do more and more of the work because 
the first time round, we were just putting it all together. Right. There's music, you know, Millicent Japonda plays amazing music in this, and there's movement, and then there's, you know, the mic and how we, we work with the speeches and all of that. So initially, when we were putting it together, <laughs> we didn't have time to really dig deep into it. Yeah. Because you, you never have enough time when you first put a, a thing together. But now it's felt like it's going back to it, deepening all the layers. I feel like I'm a better actor now than I was. <laughs> <laughs> you've, always, you've always been. <laughs> I, I'm going to pay you later for that. <laughs> but I do. I am genuinely excited about the kind of acting I get to do now. Sure. Because I'm not freaking out about putting it together. Amazing. Because you know you're a writer, actor. You're you're really spinning. It's it's a lot of um, things you're holding together. Yeah. But now I just feel like as an actor, I'm so ready. I'm so ready to. I mean, I I don't know all the lines yet. <laughs> you, you'll get there, you'll get okay. there. I'll never get there. <laughs> you didn't tell me that. Um, I think there's a really exciting opportunity. Um, it's very rare that as theatre makers we get the opportunity to re, like, remount stuff. Mm. And it's almost like, I suppose it's like um, orchestras going over the same piece of music. It's kind of like you just, you can you can pull different things out and play on different things. You can try this bit a little bit differently. But I think because of the closeness of from when you wrote it to performing it last time, as you said, you weren't able to be... You were having to be more the storyteller. Mm -hmm. Whereas now we're able to look... Well, you're able to look at it as Tundra the actor, looking at a character and mining that in a very kind of I suppose more nuanced nuanced way in terms of play mm. rather than just oral tradition. Yeah, it's a deeper it's a deeper understanding of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amazing. Um, and this play is gonna be performed in Brixton um, to our incredible community yeah. communities um, and it would be great just to hear a little bit about what you want audiences to take away from the play. I'm very clear about that. I think that you know we performed it elsewhere. We will be performing it many places yeah. um, around the country hopefully around the world as well but to me the Brixton community you know is the most exciting audience to talk to because we are multi-racial we are multi-cultural we have so much uh, different stories that we need to learn how to tell. And we need to get comfortable sharing those stories. We need to get comfortable with answering those questions. Because our children really are the ones who can then take that ball and run with it. So it feels very, very exciting to be part of the first kind of um, walking around Brixton in story, you know, mm -hmm. in just thinking, you know, when you're on the bus in Brixton, you've got 10 cultures. But, or more. Or more, yeah, yeah. you know. You ask someone a question, where are you from? You know, it's a disturbing question for a lot of us for various reasons, but it can also be a very empowering question if we know how to answer it. So for me, that, that you know, hand on my heart is the best thing about being here. And, you know, Brixton is a storied community, you know, because we've, we've always stood for something politically. And I think now more than ever, we need to be even more strong about how we participate in our politics, in how we see ourselves and how the world sees us. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I... There's not really much more to add to that. I mean, there's the... I don't think you can overstate the kind of the privilege of kind of opening that gate of story for a, for a building and I think there is so much now I mean the, we first did this play in New York and we have a you know there's a very sort of the theatre there is very much about community and I think you you have to see yourself as a custodian of kind of allowing 
other people to sort of tell their stories. And it's, it's really... I think the hope is that it's a catalyst and, you know, you've always said it's for everybody. And kind of if, if people connect with it and go away and if find something that they're able to unlock of them of their own story and then go on and tell it so it's kind of a it just um, so I would just I would hope that like that very basic thing of audiences enjoying it but also seeing that this is a space that is um, for for sharing and for everybody and sort of it's a, you know it's that kind of that kind of same building uh, buildings without wall it's very much that I think amazing yeah. fantastic so Mugabe my dad and me starts on the 24th of February and we want you to come down filled with the empowerment of acknowledging and appreciating who you are and where you're from and obviously, you know, in reception of some brilliant storytelling. Thank well, you very I mean, much. The acting is going to be great. Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> we know that. Yes, we do. We do. We do. We've got that camera now. We do, we do that. <laughs> We've got it on camera. <laughs> brilliant. Thank you very much, Tonda Ryan and John. Thank you.